I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Hey, I tell you this, every time I sit here to bring God's word to you, I count it a privilege from God. Why? Because it gives me the opportunity to be under the anointing and receive pure words from the Lord. And then the ability to transmit it to you, it's all God. Praise God. Hey, before going to today's broadcast, are you ready to make demand for your daily bread? Now, like I told you yesterday, open your mouth and say, don't just, don't just, hmm, no, 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 don't just say amen when we're done. Make your own demand. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, are you ready? Now, now declare these words with me with faith in your heart. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle today. Hey, it's coming to you. It's coming. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I read a scripture yesterday to you, and I want us to go there again. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. He says, be ye mindful always of his covenant. Keep it in your mind. That's what it means. He says, be mindful. Keep it in the front of your mind. And keep it at the back of your mind. No, no, this one, in the front of your mind. Praise God. Keep it before you. Be mindful. Not in the morning, not in the evening. Always. Now, also, being mindful means... You, you, you know, when, when you say keep something before you, it also means you're doing something and then you, 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 you imagine you're building a road, right? And then there is a rock and you look at this rock, it's going to cost a lot to take this rock out. So what do you do? You have to construct around the rock. Now, what were you doing? You were mindful of the rock. So everything you are doing, you're doing to make sure the rock is not affected. You see that? Now that's another way to be mindful of something. See that? So when you say, ah, he's so mindful of her. Now there are two ways. You see that he's always thinking of her, which is true. Even the second way means that, but in a different light. It means everything he's, he does, he considers her. So when he says, be mindful always of his covenant, he said, everything you are doing, be mindful. So I was talking to you about uh, the, the covenant of, of sustenance, which is the covenant of tithing yesterday. Now, being mindful of it, how, how, how should I be mindful of that covenant? Because what David was talking about is the covenant God made with Abraham. And I said there are two covenants that God made with Abraham. The covenant of sustenance, which is what Melchizedek came to witness. And then also the covenant of circumcision. Now, we'll go to that second covenant of circumcision. But the covenant of tithing, hey, it means God is not just your source, but God is the one that sustains you. Now, this is the reason I want you to follow me and you will learn wisdom from this. This is the reason he told us in, in, in I, shared that, well, I just mentioned the scripture yesterday. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. You shall... Remember the Lord your God, for it is Him who gives you the power to get work. Now, how often do you remember God? I know you won't say every day, but let me tell you why He made that statement in the first place. He said, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lakuta Niki Nimiki Let me, let me read the scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let me start from, because I want you to have the understanding. Let's start from verse 11, Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verse 11. We'll get to 18. Now he says, from verse 11, Beware that thou forget not the Lord your God. Beware 
that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. Okay? His judgments and his statutes. Take note of those things. It says, beware that you do not forget your God. And by not keeping his commandment, his judgment, and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flock multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, because it's surely going to happen. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fairy serpents and scorpion and testy land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God. Now what's he saying? Mm. Watch this now. Verse 17 again. Then you say, he said, be careful that you don't get to this point. Be careful that you don't get to this point. Which point? Then, verse 17, then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hands have gained me this wealth. I have created this wealth. He said, don't get there. Don't get there. Oh, hear it. Hear it again. Don't get there. Oh, see the house that I have built. You know, it was when I had this contract, you know, I planned, eh, don't get there. Don't get there. He says, the thing that will make you not to get there is what I'm about to read to you in verse 18. He says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Take note. God does not send you to go create wealth. I come on side. Mm. I told you, before you were born, Everything has been finished. God is looking for vessels through whom he will send forth his wisdom, his ideas, and then they will make it manifest on the earth. But you see, everything is of him. Everything is of him. And that's where, where he calls us to this rest. So we'll begin to bring forth things from the place of rest. No, you know this struggle every day, leave the house in the morning, come back late. I'm trying to make money. If I don't make money, how will I send my children to school? If I don't make money, how will I feed my family? If I don't make money, come on, stop it, stop it, stop it. You know what you're saying? You're getting to this point, God said, don't get Moses was telling them, don't get there. Remember where you're coming from. That's what he's saying. You ate manna that you did not know of. You were thirsty. He gave you water from the rock. He didn't tell you to go drill a borehole. He gave you water from the rock. What's he say? He took care of us. Yeah, he took care of us. Why was he taking care of you? Because of the covenant. Because of the covenant. That's why he was bound to give them manna. He said to Abraham, I will sustain you. Brothers and sisters, God sustained a whole nation 
for 40 years with manna. You know, sometimes people, when you hear people say things like, you have to go get a job because everything will not be by miracle. Brothers and sisters, God would have been a very wicked God to have fed a people for 40 years. Do you know what that means? The child that was born when they left Egypt grew up not knowing any other thing but to wake up in the morning, go outside, get food, come back home, prepare and eat. In the evening, go outside, get food, come back, prepare and eat. That's all they knew. They never knew how to farm. They never knew how to go. They never knew any other thing. They wanted water. Water would come out from the rock and they would drink. Oh, they wanted meat. Quail was sent in. And they had enough meat to last them for a whole month. And they grew for 40 years. So the child that was born when they came out of Egypt became 10 years old. That's all they knew. Became 20. That's all they knew. Became 30. That's all they knew. Now, how do you expect them? Now, have you ever imagined what kind of generation was God raising? A lazy one? No, brothers and sisters, no. You, you see, that's the reason that eventually God was angry with them. Why? He said, these guys, they would never understand me. God was taking out that basics from them so that they can focus and think to know what God wants to do. I'm telling you this, telling you this truth. The greatest distraction you have in your life is this simple question. What will I eat? or covering how will i be sheltered that is your greatest distraction in life everyone that have gone off went off for this reason what will i eat what will i have for covering either clothes or shelter what will i eat what will i be covered with that is the root of every temptation that that veered off a lot of people So one is thinking, man, if I can get this, I've gotten enough money that can sustain me for the next 10 years. What's he thinking? What will I eat? So when he says sustain for the next day, what's he talking about? His feeding, his covering. Now covering, anything that covers your nakedness, anything that shelters you, maybe a house, clothes, or, or you know what I'm talking about, situations that covers you. That is the root of every temptation. Now, God took care of that for them. By feeding them, giving them water. The Bible said their clothes grew on them. <laughs> what a life. So what was God thinking after this, when they come into the promised land? What's going to happen? Was the manna supposed to continue? Or were they, now be, were they now supposed to go learn how to farm to make food for themselves at 40 years old? Never seen that before. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says at the end of the journey, God was angry with them. So it means God had greater plans for them that they couldn't enter. After all that training for 40 years, God said they still cannot enter. So have you ever wondered what that rest would have been like? If you don't, that one in the wilderness, if you don't call it rest, you, you know, you, you, you are fed every day. Think about it. You are fed every day. You have no care. Every day of your life. All you expected now is to think, what would God have me do? Now you're not, you're not being pushed to get money to eat. You're not being pushed. Nothing like that. Hmm. So now he tells us, now, 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 this is why Jesus clearly stated, he said, take no thought for your life. Say, what will I eat? Or close, what will I eat? He said, don't, don't think of it. Don't, don't. Because that's the root of every temptation. So God said to them, says, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get. Now, how do you remember the Lord your God? 
You remember the Lord your God when you tithe. Now that's the whole, that's what Moses was communicating to them. Now every time you receive money, every time you receive, the first thing that you must do is to remember, this thing came by God. Now how do you remember that? Is somebody say, oh Lord, we thank you because this thing came by you. Come on now, <laughs> praise God. It is by tithing. So you remember, I'm taking out the tenth of this that I have received. Why are you taking out the tenth of it? Because it is the Lord that gave me the power to get it. God brought it. Up. And number two, why? It says that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers. What's that covenant? I told you the sum of the covenant of sustenance that God made with Abraham is that through him, all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's the, 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 the focus of the covenant. That's the finality of the blessing of God. All the families of the earth will be blessed through Abraham's seed. Now, God says the reason he's giving you power to get wealth is that he will establish his covenant, which he swore to our father Abraham. So when I'm blessed, I take the first thing I do, the first thing, because it's an act of honor, and I'm remembering where this thing came from. It is not my hand that got me this wealth. Hey, I may have worked, yes. It's not my hand. It's not my power that gave me that money. It's not my power. So I, as I receive the money, I say, Lord, I'm taking you, I'm taking out the tithe of this first. And then I separate it from it. Then I began, begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do with this tithe? What would you have me do with this money? And the Lord begins to tell you, hey, son, I want you to take it to so and so. I want you to take it to so and so. Then you take it, you obey the Lord and you take it to that person. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. You know, he came to see me. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I was praying last night and the Lord said, I should bring this to you. Oh, me? Yes, you. Oh, really? Are you sure? No, no, no. The Lord said I should bring it to you. Wow. Thank you very much. And, and you hand it over, or, or you give him a check, or you give him a transfer, whatever it is. He said, Wow. Do you know something? So, what? This is what we needed right now. What is that? That family has been confirmed that day to have received the blessing of Abraham. God. That family has witnessed that God has blessed them. Now, the blessing God was talking about, it says, through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. He was referring to Ali Kuma Salihi. He was referring to his hand getting to every family of the earth. That's what God was referring to. His, his hand. So when, when God commands you, that's why I tell people, this is how we tithe. We tithe by giving the owner what is his. We give it to the Lord. It's his money. How do you give it to him? He hears. He speaks. So you take it before him and say, Lord, I, I, I have received some money. So now I'm honoring you with your tithe. So can you instruct me what to do with it? Oh, I've not heard the Lord. Then keep it. Keep it separately. Until he commands you. And when he commands you, you will see why you kept it. He will tell you, oh, give it to that min. He give it to that minister over there. Give it to. He, he knows where it's needed. But guess what he's doing? Every time you obey him, guess what you're doing? You're causing the blessing of Abraham, which states that all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's exactly what you're doing. That's the reason God is putting money in your hand. And my time is up. Praise God. But I'll continue from here tomorrow. Praise God. Oh, glory to Jesus. I pray for you. That through your hands, God will reach out to every family around you. Everyone around you will witness that God has blessed you by reason of the blessing getting to them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.